Hey, good people. Mark Holmes here, as always. I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's had a great weekend. I'm finally getting back into swinging things. I, I feel tired, though. Um, I guess my body is still getting used from going, you know, east coast, west coast, cold out on the west coast versus hot here on the east coast and things, and the time difference and everything else. Uh, that flight from hell on JetBlue. That's right, JetBlue. I'm talking shit about you. You guys suck. You used to be my mom, my wife's favorite airline. Right now, I'm sorry, that was ass. That, that Those seats were so uncomfortable. That stuff about no carry-ons. Uh, uh, 35 for the first bag, and then he forced us $45 on second bags, you know, because we couldn't take carry-ons. Man, that sucked. It sucked. That's right, JetBlue. You, you sucked. And, and uh, the whole other thing is, I paid $25 extra to pick a seat when I booked the flight. And then you're going to tell me I can't have a carry-on bag? No. That's some bullshit that you guys have. Anyway. Anyway, I'm worried. I got two things I want to talk about here tonight. One, a player that we looked at and said, he's on the bubble and gone. And two, a problem that the Dallas Cowboys don't seem to want to address. You know, the Cowboys do some things really well. When you look at how they do in the draft in comparison to most teams, they do really, really good. They do good at finding homegrown talent and undrafted rookie free agents, okay? You know, Lyle Collins fell because of insinuating circumstances, but they were smart enough to get him signed, and quite frankly, they got him on the cheap for as many years as they did. The fact that their starting quarterback was a fourth-round drafted quarterback <coughs> to look at our excuse me, right tackle, who was a rookie undrafted free agent. And you look at some of the other players, like Marquez Bell, that, you know, is undrafted, and I believe um, Houston is another one that you look at and say, do you, where, where do the Cowboys find these guys? Because they could be guys that are going to make the roster. They are so good at doing that. But it's the other things that they fail on. See, and you have to be good across everything. One of the problems that we seem to have in and out constantly is kicker. From Money Maher to, uh, uh, I, I don't even want to go through the names of them, uh, to um, Greg the Leg and all these guys, we don't seem to be able to find a kicker or invest and realize we have a kicking problem. We then gone through and understood that we lost games last year because of our kicker, and then we got two guys that you look at and say, I'm not confident in either of them. I'm not confident in either. I'm basically saying to Dak, you got to score touchdowns every time because if it's not outside of the 25, I have no faith whatsoever in a field goal. Just go for it on fourth down. Anytime it's outside of the 25 and it's out of punting range, just go for it. Just go for it. And I don't understand how the Cowboys don't look at that and say, we've lost games because our kicker can't make kicks. Every year we lose two, three games because of a sorry-ass kicker. And from what I saw out of training camp, neither of them, neither of them should start a game for the Cowboys. I am so bad. I mean, it is so bad that you know, go back to Money Maher. I'm serious. At least he could kick the deep ones. I'm sitting there watching these guys missing 46, 42 yarders on a regular basis. Can't we just, I know we're, we're, we're tight on money, Stephen Jones. You don't want to spend any money. But can we find a damn kicker for real? And that's going to be one of those things. We're going to blame it on Dak Prescott. We're going to have another sorry-ass kicker when we really need it to maybe move up the chain for playoff seeding and stuff. But we're going to lose bullshit games because of the kicker. Come on, man. you got to do better than that. 
that's one of the big things that keep me awake. But I still worry about saying, basically right now, Josh Ball, who was injured last year, in his second year, hasn't had a start, is now the backup for Tyra Smith. I know Tyra Smith right now is looking good, but we all know the odds have been against Tyra Smith because 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. Six years in a row. Six years in a row. He's missed time. And every time he's missed time, our t offense misses a lot of beats. So we need to do something to address that. But I will say this much. A guy who I liked when we originally drafted him, even though he had some warts on him and some problems, which was drafted by Rod Marnelli, was Tristan Hill. The things I looked at with Tristan Hill was potential. Tristan Hill, big, 300-pound guy, kind of tall, big, wide body, but had a motor on him. But for whatever reason, you know, he's had injuries, he's had a hard time getting out on the field, and most people would have said, going into training camp, that he's going to get cut. In fact, I think I said he's on the bubble. When I landed in Cali, first thing I'm seeing is from the first pad of practices is Tyler Smith pancaking Tristan Hill. Now, to his defense, here's what you have to understand. Football is a game of leverage. Typically speaking, the low man wins. And sometimes it's easy to get out, out of balance. Sometimes, like for me, okay, Right now, I wish I was this big when I played nose guard at JMU, but I was about 30 pounds lighter. I was quick, and I could do like a jab step, get the center to step with me, and then dip and rip and cut in the inside, right? Which would be, my speed would get me in the backfield. If I got caught, if I got caught jab stepping and ripping, and it ends up being a down block from the guard, I'm back there with the safety because I've stepped and I'm going like this. My body is turned. I'm out of balance. And that's when he hits you. You go flying. It's about balance. So you look at that block and you see Tyler Smith, boom, engaging with them. Tristan Hill's kind of sideways and goes down. And as a casual fan, you look at that and say, oh, man, Tristan Hill, he sucks, man. That's every play. He's a bum. Get him out of here. I wouldn't tell you that. That's happened to Reggie White, one of the greatest out there. Time to time where he gets caught out of balance and ends up getting hit. Everybody goes backwards sometimes. The question is, how many times do you go backwards versus how many times do you have great plays? And it's like uh, T.J. Basher. We all saw him elevate for that catch, one-handed catch, and it wowed us. And all of a sudden, people were like, man, that guy, he needs to be a starter. He's the best wide receiver we got. It's one play. What do you do consistently is the real question. Because everybody has at least one good play in their life. And now with social media, with all the coverage that we get, we're seeing things and, and coverage like we've never seen before. We're seeing every single play. We have literally people that are saying, we need to go ahead and get rid of digs because of one drill in practice. Got me? Because we're talking about practice, not the game. All right. What I will say about Tristan Hill is, I think Tristan Hill makes the team. I think Tristan Hill has changed the narrative on him being useless. Because I got to tell you, after that block, the next day when I was at practice, Tristan Hill was unblockable. I'm serious. Tristan Hill was unblockable. He made some moves. He was bull rushing. You know, everybody's talking about, you know, Jordan Davis and that one pass rush yesterday or, or whatever it was, right? One on one. I saw Tristan Hill doing that in practice 
11 on 11, driving guys straight back to the quarterback. And I believe that Tristan Hill has changed the narrative and is really going to be getting some looks on making the team. The thing is, is you only get bits and pieces of what's going on in practice. What you'll have is the coaches and the scouting department and all those guys, they have got film on every single guy, on every single play, and they will analyze it and watch it to the nth degree as they make their decisions on who's going to be on the team. You can't make it from one touchdown pass in practice. you got to look at every single aspect of it and understand that not every drill that is done is done fairly where you really get a taste of what a player can do. It's not necessarily game condition. It's kind of like the combine. Yeah, you got guys that can do the shuttle run real good. You got guys that can jump out the building. But the question is, when the pads go on and they have to make a play, can they make that damn play? That's the difference, y'all. Anyway, I got to get up early and get downtown for the traffic to go look at some work at the Smithsonian. And um, I'm going to get ready to go to bed. I still haven't quite recovered from my trip. But remember, tell the people you love, you love them. Don't wait. Because you might not get the chance again. I appreciate y'all, and God willing, I see you tomorrow. Peace out.